Hey everybody, Rodamon here. Thanks for tuning in to the very first episode of Timberborn, which originally streamed live on Twitch. Timberborn is a beaver city building game with a unique architecture system, wooden machinery, dams, and water physics. Prepare your settlement for reoccurring droughts, stockpile on food, and keep fields and forests alive even after rivers run dry. Uh, or rather, dry up. Rely on both natural water sources and artificial irrigation, so on and so forth. Uh, so yes, this stream is sponsored. I got the game for free, and we'll be going from there. Sounds good to you? Sounds good to me. So normally when you play, uh, you have the choice of two different factions, Folktales and Iron Teeth. Uh, they are very similar in most ways. Uh, the chief differences between them is how they grow their populations uh, through having children or through being vac grown. Uh, and then also a sort of advanced tech for how to generate power. That would be the major differences between the two. I'm going to be playing on Iron Teeth. Just because i they're metal beavers. I mean, why wouldn't I want to be a metal beaver? Um, so all of the maps in this game are uh, pre-designed, predetermined. And as you can see, they have different sizes. So 256 by 256, all the way down to 50 by 50. As one might imagine, the 50 by 50 is a micro map, and it's really challenging to manage because of the lack of resources. So, of course, I'm going to do that. Uh, and then you're given the differences of difficulty. So, uh, on easy, they don't eat as much, they don't drink as much, and droughts are very rare and short. Normal is the typical challenge. And then, of course, there's hard. Uh, so on normal, I would say sort of the way the drought mechanics work is they're like seasonal and somewhat predictable and they don't last very long and they're pretty easy to survive. On hard, it ramps up. So it starts short and it gets longer and longer and longer and longer and longer. So if you're not actively managing your water, you just die. Uh, and of course, as promised, I'm going to be playing on hard. And I am going to have to do a very fast sprint for survival at the start of the game. Uh, but I will do my very best in explaining what I am doing and how everything works. So although it's going to be a fast sprint for survival, uh, I'll be taking you step by step through it. There is a bit of a tutorial that is built into the game when you play a new game. And uh, I guess I am supplementing that tutorial. So let's kick this off. Nitz, Red Dragon, Drafting, and Byron, thanks for the resubs and bits. Welcome all. Vat-grown beavers? Yes, exactly. We are going to be vat-grown beavers. I kid you not. We are vat-grown. All right, right at the start here, I'm going to pause and wonder where my music is. There it is. There's the music. Um, so here is the map. If you play a diorama map, it's always going to be this size. It's always going to be exactly this map. Right at the start, let's cover some of the game mechanics. So you have population well-being. Whoa, Kadath, thanks for all the gifted subs. Immediately to the pink light. <laughs> Thank you, buddy. Kadath was the one that uh, suggested that I play this uh, for October and November, so I was happy to do so. Population well-being. So the basic needs need to be met or your beavers die. Um, sleep, they will just sleep even if you don't have it scheduled. But uh, hunger and thirst would be the ones that you need to meet. And it's harder and harder difficult. These They eat more and they drink more. And then as you offer up additional population well-being check marks, they will actually have a longer uh, longevity. They will live longer and become more powerful, be able to haul more, be able to move faster, that kind of thing. Um, you have your population over here on the top left with children and adults. Children do not work. They don't require education. They're beavers, but they don't work. And um, the more well-being that you offer them, I believe the faster they uh, they like age up to adults, which is interesting. Byron also, thank you for the gifted subs. <laughs> oh boy. And then homelessness, uh, giving them shelter, obviously, helps their well-being. That would be comfort here. And then 
who's unemployed. Now, normally in the game, you have the concept of district centers. So, district centers are individual population centers to limit um, commute times. But because Diorama is so small, district centers don't really matter. The district center is essentially how far your builders can build until they are out of range. But Diorama is so microscopic that district centers is totally moot. Uh, next up is knowledge or science. And then here is materials like wood and planks. This is food up in the here, then logs, which is just raw wood, right? And water. Uh, here is your district settings where you can scroll through the districts. Of course, we're only going to have Yodaville. And then the current cycle, which is year and day and weather. Uh, every day is a year in beaver time. So if you check out one of your beavers, as you can see, this guy is, or gal, I don't even know is 25 years old. That's also 25 days old. Um, you have this here is your time controls, which should be pretty typical. And then this is the time of day, the day-night cycle. Uh, I'm going to immediately kick the working hours up to 19, maybe to 20. Yeah, I'll do to 20. We're going to have them work 20 hours a day. The, uh, the iron teeth are tough. And because they're vat-grown, um, they're even tougher. One of the advantages of the vat-grown beaver uh, versus the normal beavers is because they're vat-grown, their fertility rates are not driven by sort of happiness or homelessness or any of that. You can just keep pumping them out like clones. Uh, so yeah. Nitz and Cruzio, thanks for the bits and thank you for the, uh, the resub. There's some treats for Yoda. Yoda's finally joining me, getting treats right after lunch. Okay, uh, so the first thing that I'm going to want to do here is do some planning. Uh, let me bring my goals up. Boom. Goal right above me. As you can see, I have to prepare for the first drought. So the way water works here, a water will spawn at this water source. And it will flow out of the map. And we have to make sure that we get enough water to survive the droughts which is going to be the driving threat factor. Uh, generally in these games, you have some sort of threat factor. In RimWorld, it might be raiders. In Banished, it might be starvation. In this game, it's mostly dehydration. You can very easily dehydrate and die. And then another thing to notice, much like Minecraft, uh, the water irrigates the land, uh, about 15 tiles. So everything within 15 tiles or so, depending on the elevation as well, uh, gets hydrated. Anything that is sort of dusty, dirty, like, or not dirty, but dusty like this, cracked ground, uh, that's not hydrated and will not grow. All right, with that all said, let me lay out the very basic uh, structures. So one interesting thing about this game is that these paths here do not require work, but increase movement speed. So you can use paths to help guide your beaver's into moving faster. It also will physically extend the builder zone and the hauler zone. So as you can see here, because of the road I have that goes east, my builders that are employed by Yodaville can move much further east than they can west. So trying to have efficient um, modes of transportation and efficient roads is very important for uh, beaver efficiency, I guess. The first thing I'm going to need to build is a deep water pump to be able to pump water out of the stream and then a small water tank to be able to store it so that we have some water storage. The, the deep water pump can store 15 water on its own and then this small water tank can store uh, 30. Uh, the other thing I'm going to do is use the priorities. So the construction priority over here, you can have lowest, low, normal, high and highest. So the deep water pump will be highest, and then the small water tank will be second highest, or high. Another thing I'm going to need is these require 12 logs and 15 logs apiece. So we're going to need to set up uh, wood harvesting zones, lumberjack flags. Lumberjack flags are free to build, and each flag will employ a lumberjack, or a beaver jack, I guess. Or lumber beaver, I, I don't know. Um... And then you have to mark specifically which trees you want to cut down 
which is this here, this tree cutting, and then you drag the zone to the trees that you want to cut. And at this point, I can happily basically mark all trees on the map. I don't really care. Uh, the painter tool sticks to the layer that you're on. So if you have um, a layer like this, as you can see, I only can paint in the layer that I'm on, which is a, a really nice feature. So yeah, um, the full trees, the full size trees are the ones that actually yield wood. These small trees don't, they have to grow. So now we have three lumberjack flags. Another thing that I'm gonna wanna do is a gathering flag. A gatherer is a very basic, they're, they're just a forager and they gather berries. Now for the iron teeth, we use berries to actually grow our population. So berries are somewhat vital. Whereas the, um, the other species, the folktales, uh, they, berries aren't as important to them because they don't grow their population based on berries. All right, so I'm gonna unpause, but play on normal speed. One of the things I did here was throw four workers, because I had a bunch of unemployed people, four workers into the Yodaville, and this district here, these are all my builders and haulers. That's what they do. So my builders are gonna be building the gathering flag and the three lumber flags. And I'm gonna set these as highest priority as well. And you can set the priorities with the priority tool here or at the individual uh, work structure that you're trying to build. And you should see my builders head on out and hit up those flags. If you have any questions, feel free to hit me up uh, in chat and I'll just try to answer them. So first order of business is to get the deep water pump and your, um, your beavers can survive about two days without food or water and then they die. So I have zero water right now. So I have about two days to be able to supply it, which should be no problem at all. Now, I'm also building four workplaces. So as soon as they're done, I'm going to fire one of these beavers that are a builder hauler so that they can be employed at these uh, work flags. And there we go. Now we have three lumberjacks and a berry collector. Another important thing to note is that individual workplaces have a certain amount of storage. So the gathering flag can only store 20 berries until it's full, as can the lumberjack flags. So once they're full, they'll need to haul it to some sort of storage facility. And if there's not a storage facility around, they will go idle. They won't work anymore. Uh, so that's another important thing to note. All right. I'm also, so down here in the tools, let me run through these tools. Um, so you just have the general uh, mouse, right? You have the cut trees, which I demonstrated. Here you have plant crops, which we will get into once we have a farmhouse. Then here is where you can plant uh, berry bushes or trees when you have a forester. That's gonna be really important to get early on because I have a very finite amount of trees that exist on this map. Um, the next tool demolishes buildings and this tool demolishes plants. So I'm actually going to demolish these three trees because they're in the way. I want a road that runs south here. Uh, and if I wanted to delete a, a part of the road, I could do that. Now, one another important thing to note is all workspaces need to be connected to one another. So let me demonstrate that. If I delete here, these three lumberjack flags will flag that they are not connected to a district and will, won't work unless they are. So that's going to be another important thing to cover. I wish one of these beavers would like scream, rock an issue, because that's what they sound like to me. Yeah, uh, it actually seems like the volume's a little low. Let me, uh, let me turn that up a bit. Give you the full beaver experience. Racket issue. Yeah, that's that's how I feel about them. All right, so now the lumberjacks are going to be cutting down trees and bringing them back to their lumberjack flags, and then the builders are going to collect the lumber from the lumberjack flags and bring it over to the deep water pump, where they're going to build the deep water pump. The berry collector is just collecting berries and bringing it back to the gathering flag. 
And then my builders are going to do some of the building tasks I have, like cut down these trees that I deem in the way. So boom, one, two, and three. Then I am going to set up another flag here. Another lumberjack flag, a fourth, if you will. And now this lumberjack flag is connected to the district. Another thing to see, and this will make a lot more sense if I have a long run, so let me do a quick long run here. Uh, the longer your road is, the path to your district will become increasingly yellow, orange, red. So here is a very long run. It's still allowable. Our builders can get out here, but it does warn you with the colors that it's a very inefficient road. So definitely design your roads efficiently if you can. Also, when you're playing, uh, make sure not to accidentally nuke the natural um, slopes that you have. You can delete these and it would be very detrimental. You'd probably have to, if you did that early game, you'd probably have to start over. They can be replaced late game with tech, but early game, you're just screwed. Don't do it. Um, and you're allowed to do it. As you can see, they have a delete marker here, but but don't. Seriously, don't. <laughs> Byron, thanks for gifting out uh, yet another sub. And to our raider, nonetheless. What ra ra uh, You raided me like before I even started. I wasn't even ready. What were you playing? I shouted you out. You were playing Mass Effect. Cool. Legendary Edition. Sounds like per uh, it stems from personal experience. No, actually it didn't. But I do understand that uh, on this diorama map, there's a lot of ramps that connect you to resources. So like if you deleted this slope here, you wouldn't have access to all of these trees on this plateau. And that would be terrible because you would just be starved for wood early game and, and, and you would die. You would 100% you would die. Another thing to keep an eye on is unemployment. Currently everybody is employed, but as soon as the children that I have in my uh, settlement district, whatever you want to call it, uh, age up, I'm going to want to offer them employment immediately so that they're they're working and they're productive. Another thing I'm going to start to do is to delete the blueberry bushes here that don't have fruit, that are not fruiting. Um, because I am eventually going to treat this as farmland and the berry bushes get in the way of that. Yeah, it, it's very easy to misclick if you're doing a delete all drag and hit those slopes and then be like, oh, well, guess I lose now. And that's not, not fun. Yeah. On the hardest difficulty, uh, the game is relatively unforgiving and I love it for that. I, you know, well, you know me, I'm a masochist for those kind of things. So, um, at this point, the thing to keep an eye on would be when the gathering flag is full of blueberries, I am going to pause it. The hotkey for that would be P, as in Papa, and uh, employ that gatherer somewhere else because there's only really so many berries that I need. And currently, you start off with a whole bunch of berries stuffed inside your district center, but your district center cannot act as storage long term, so you are going to want to get a warehouse. Uh, so let's go... Fire Suli that is working in the Gatherer, and Suli will then immediately reemploy in the deep water pump. Uh, there we go. Oh, or someone else in the deep water pump. I guess they all moved around. So now we have a water pumper who's working and in this little deep water pump building. Another thing to note is this deep water pump has a max depth of six. So if I clip into the map here, you can kind of see that the pump goes way, way, way under. Yeah, this is an indicator that if you have a very deep aquifer or reservoir, uh, the deep water pump can work up to a depth of six. Most buildings, when they're flooded, disable. So if you have water deeper than six, the lowest level of that water is not going to be obtainable um, easily unless you reduce the water level. All right, so now that we have the deep water pump built, uh, the next thing I'd like to do is to set myself up with a farmhouse. So here you can see the range of the farmhouse. This is the physical range that the farmhouse will be able to plant crop, plant uh, whatever seeds you want to plant. 
And I'm going to put the farmhouse... Uh, I'll just put it here for now. And this farmhouse is a lower priority than the small water tank. So they're going to build the small water tank first and then the farmhouse. When did they change that? Oh, I don't know. All I know is it has a max death of six, so it's important to note that. Uh, when you're starting a new game, especially if you're on the hardest difficulty, I don't know when the first drought is going to be. The game will warn you a three days in advance, and that is it. Only three days. So I have no idea when first drought will be, but I do know that I need to immediately prepare for that, which is why it is currently my priority. Uh, once I am not sweating from knowing that the drought is coming, I can open it up to user submitted ideas and and sort of have you guys suggest projects for me to work on. But, uh, but right now it is urgent that I prepare. And the way I'm gonna prepare is this. I'm going to create dams. Um, I'm gonna create dams here. And let me explain why. Dams allow some, but not all the water, as you can see, to flow over. Uh, it keeps about 0.65 water, or 65% of, of the stream filled with water. So when the first drought comes, the water will stop flowing from here at the waterfall. And the only water I'll have available to me is the water in this river here. And creating the dam at the very end of this section allows me to keep as much water as possible. If I created it down here... I would not keep the water up here. As you can see, um, this water would then flow down stream, and I wouldn't, uh, like, very, very later on, I might want dams here as well to keep water in this part of the section, but because it's tiered, I really only want to care about what's around my crops. Is water kept at the layer level? Yes, but it is used, and it also evaporates. So, I can't rely on this method of just damming uh, for long droughts, because what will end up happening is my water level will slowly decrease throughout the duration of the drought as I pull water out to drink, and also as a, a, a as a natural uh, water evaporates over time. So I'm going to need to engineer more complicated solutions to deal with extended droughts, especially on hard difficulty. On easy or normal, uh, your droughts aren't that ridiculous. On hard, your droughts are murderous, absolutely murderous. Deep pools with less surface area? Yes, exactly. You're going to want man-made or beaver-made uh, aquifers. Big time. Big time. Okay. So it's nighttime now, but I have my beaver set up for a 20-hour working hour because we really need to uh, put a lot of effort into getting these dams set up. But before I even do the dam, I do want the farmhouse. And actually... Before I even want the dams and the farm or and the farmhouse, I'm also going to want to make planks of wood, and I'll explain why. I'm going to very quickly run out of uh, wood, and if I don't start making planks, planks are the requirement to build a forester, also sixty science. So I want to build uh, at least seven planks, or actually, pretty much exactly seven planks. I'm going to want exactly seven planks before the first drought hits, if I can. It's not necessary, but it's going to help out a lot. And the way these work is they're powered by uh, water wheels. You can also power them by hamster wheels, but it's far less efficient. Now, one uh, lumber mill will be powered by one hamster wheel, um, but the hamster wheels provide 50 horsepower at the cost of 40 lumber, and the water wheels provide 180 horsepower at the cost of 50 lumber. So for 10 more lumber, you get 130 more horsepower. It's uh, kind of a no-brainer. And the priority of this structure is the farmhouse is at max. The water wheel will be high. These two will be at normal, and then meaning these at low. And then if I do get a warning that the drought is coming, I will boost the priority of these dams up higher. But yeah, this is the order in which I want structures built. And you only get power when water is flowing, yes. 
which is exactly why I'm trying to build this before first drought. Because once the drought hits, the water wheel won't spin, and I will lose my ability for cheap power, and I will need to resort to a power wheel. Also to note, the lumber mill needs a connection to the road where its connection point is. And because it needs to be powered, it's cheapest to put it next to uh, the water wheel. And then I didn't really go into this, but then there's a whole bunch of different ways to transfer power. So power is transferred through these uh, power shafts. And you can also transfer power straight through buildings, which is kind of nice. So if you connect multiple buildings together, all of these lumber mills here would be powered up. Obviously, they wouldn't have enough power to actually run, but they would be technically powered up if adjacent. Now, I do want to set up my... Um, I do want to set up my... my little district nicer eventually. So this is just rushing to try to get a forester. Nothing more. Can you set up an aqueduct system? Yes, you can. Um... And you can even irrigate with an aqueduct system as well. But on hard difficulty, the first drought comes so quickly that you're not going to have the chance for that. Setting up the aqueduct system requires dynamite, and you can blow up, um, you can blow up map tiles with dynamite. But that's much later on in the tech tree. That's not something you'll be able to do uh, before first drought. Doesn't matter how fast you are; it's just unattainable. First drought's probably going to come around day five-ish, day six-ish, something like that. The longer it takes, the better it is for me, because it gives me more time to prepare. Uh, okay, so the farmhouse needs 25, and there's three types of food. So if we check back here in the population well-being, as you can see, nutrition one and two and three. Um, carrots supply nutrition one. And potatoes can supply up to nutrition two, and then wheat or bread can supply up to nutrition three. Bread is the most efficient way of feeding your population, but it also requires a lot more science to unlock. But um, square foot for square foot, it's definitely the way to feed late game, but it requires a bakery, it requires a grist mill, which needs to be powered, and then, you know, it requires um, the farmland. With this drought explanation, the game sounds a lot harder than it looks. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, on normal difficulty, no. But on hard difficulty, on diorama mode, yes. It's actually ridiculously hard. <laughs> it can be. Alright. So, my builders, I have... Th oh, we have an unemployed person. So, I have four builders now. Um, are bringing the wood from... The farmhouse, or uh, from the the lumberjack flags to the farmhouse, and getting that going as fast as it can. Yeah, I chose iron teeth. The vat grown. Here is the pods that you eventually build. I'm not ready to build pods right now because I, I have other things I'm working on. But um, yeah, you grow your population in pods. It's awesome. All right, so when we're talking about farming, my initial farm here is just going to be out of convenience. So I'm going to plant carrots around the farmhouse so they don't have to travel very far. And I'm going to plant in a lot of spots that I don't intend to keep planted late game. So this section here will be uh, my initial farm area. And you can only plant in the green soil this here acts as fully fertile, and there's no penalties, but it lets you know that you're on the border. You're at the max range. As you can see, trees follow the same rules. The sort of half dry, half fertile is still able to support trees and plants. All right, and once, oh, that farmhouse is built. So let's go ahead and fire one of my builders throw them in as a farmer, and I'm going to reduce the maximum amount of farmers that I have from two to one. And then I'm also going to pause the lumberjack flag. And now Suli here is going to run around and start sowing carrots. Now the reason I'm doing carrots 
is that carrots don't require any additional anything. You just eat them raw. And as you can see, they pr they take four days to grow and they give you, they fulfill your hunger and they fulfill uh, nutrition one. Potatoes, you cannot eat raw. I know, it doesn't ne make that much sense, but you can eat raw. Potatoes require a potato grill, which takes wood to burn to make a baked potato. They're more efficient than carrots, but early game, I'm going to be very um, labor restricted. I'm not going to have a lot of laborers. So I'm just growing the cheapest because I don't have a large population. So I'm not really worried about trying to feed a lot of mouths. I'm just trying to survive. Eventually, I will, uh, I will use more potatoes and then use more uh, wheat and bread. But not at the start. Let's see if Tusk will join me. I'd be happy if she joined me. All right, other things I want to queue up is an inventor. So an inventor, hi Tusky, hi girl. An inventor is your scientist. They work in there and they build up uh, science. Hey friend, come here, come here. Hi. Are you a little, would you eat, would you eat my little beavers? I think you would, I think she would. <laughs> Getting them some treats. All right, so this water wheel is uh, about a fifth supplied. And here's the little indicators that things need to drink. Their thirst hits critical, and then they run to the nearest water source and drink. Scientist Beaver? Yeah, you better believe it. Uh, but this is going to be my lowest priority. I want to make sure to get the lumber mill going first. Because we can make science during a drought. We cannot make lumber not with this method during a drought. Uh, another thing I could do to speed this up a little bit is... Let's go ahead and uh, shrink the farm zone a little bit. And I'm just going to supply... Let's forget that there, too. I'm going to uh, just build a temporary path here to be able to speed beavers up as they walk towards the water wheel because I could just obviously my farmer has other farmland to uh, to sow so it's not like this area that I had originally queued up is necessary and as you can see they're definitely moving faster I'm trying to get this uh, water wheel built what headset am I using? oh so all of my um, my hardware is on my website uh so here is the link. But this is the Sennheiser HD 598CS. It's kind of a mouthful and hard to remember, but Sennheisers, essentially. My last pair were Sennheisers as well. Uh, I like them. A little pricey, so I waited for a good deal. But, uh, yep, <laughs> rad gear. <laughs> I don't have any affiliates with any hardware. Uh, and I wasn't paid by Sennheiser. Just my preference. My voice is deep. Okay. <laughs> sure. You know whose voice is deep? This one. If I can get her to bark. Go what? Let's see if she'll bark for me. Go what? Go what? Go what? Go what? Nah, she's not gonna bark. You're cute. That's okay. She's just cute. Hey, Glitch. Busy today? Well, take it easy, buddy. Oh, a pet tusk? This girl? Yeah. Good girl. Alright, so 40 out of 50 logs. We're almost done with the water wheel. The lumber mill and the power shaft are only 16 logs, so... A tiny fraction of the overall project. And a hydrate. Artificial vanilla comes from beaver, right? Uh, I vaguely remember reading about that, but then also reading that it was kind of debunked. Like, maybe originally. Oh, so here we go. Forecast. Drought incoming. 
three days. So on day six, we will have a drought. I don't know the duration of the drought, but I do know that I have three days to prepare and it will take me about two days to build the dam in experience. So if I don't get the lumber mill today uh, constructed, uh, well, I better. <laughs> I better. Uh, I'm going to temporarily fire my deep water pump person because I have uh, 30 water stocked up and I'm employing them as a lumberjack for now so that I can supply even more wood. Trying to get uh, this project set up as fast as I can. Comes from a gland, if you remember correctly. Well, kind of like in Singlass for uh, beer, right? From fish. There's a lot of weird things that come from animals that we put into uh, food that you wouldn't think about. Like, uh, like red dye for candy comes from bugs. Well, not in Europe, I don't think, but in the U.S. it does. Yeah, Kadath and I. <laughs> yep, comes from bugs. I stole your factoid. But uh, I don't think it comes from bugs if the candy is sourced in Europe because of uh, EU rules, if I recall correctly. All right, so at this point, I need to prioritize the lumber mill and the power shaft because destroying these berry bushes here have the same priority as building, and I don't want my beavers breaking down berry bushes. That's a complete and total waste of their time. So now they're back to building. Because the end of the day, uh, if I don't have the lumber mill, I'm basically going to have to do the, the dam. All right. But this, I think they'll get it done. Rivers be damned. <laughs> yeah, I hope so. Now, dams aren't that efficient, and I'm going to want to tech out of the dams uh, as soon as I damn can. So there we go. We have the lumber mill, um, and the power shaft is getting built now. And I'm going to fire my farmer and employ him as the lumber miller. Or actually, nope, fire that too. Employ him as my lumber miller because... Uh, you know, we need that. So, the next project is getting the four dams built. As fast as we can. I believe then it's still watertight if you don't use edge sections, which means this dam isn't necessary. The the one highlighted. But the thing is, uh, I'd also like to walk on it. So you can set paths up on the dam. If it's not uh, just diagonals. So I spend the extra 20 wood for a non-diagonal so I can get to the other side because there are blueberry patches in here and I'm actively destroying these blueberry patches so I'm obviously going to start to use these instead. And uh, we have one dam fully supplied so then we just need to do the other three. I don't need the farmer working in the farmhouse right now because everything is sown and growing. So until it's done growing, and I think the furthest along is something like 30%, so it's still gonna need uh, a few days. We can move the labor around. Now one labor that I'm going to need to reemploy is the deep water pump. Uh, and possibly another gathering flag, but I'll have to I'll have to think about that. Or not another, not a new gathering flag, but uh, a gatherer taking a look at my food and it's how it's dwindling. Oh, but another child just leveled up and is now working in the water. Perfect. All right, so that is one of the four. And this is the big race. The big race to the first, uh, first drought. Is there a loss of resources? 100% loss, actually. It's one of the unique things about this game or not unique, but different things about this game is if you destroy a building in progress, you lose everything. If you destroy a building, you lose everything. There is no refunds ever. You just don't get refunded. All right, there's two. 
And we have 1.7 days to build the other two, which I think will be no problem. Uh, the other thing to note is as soon as I hit seven planks here for my lumber mill, I'm going to fire my lumber mill worker and employ them somewhere else. Because I don't need any more than seven. I'm going for the bare minimum for a, uh, a forestry. Oh, one thing I can do at this point is get rid of this path here that is not needed. And perhaps plant the carrots once I have a free worker. I don't currently. Mostly just making sure that I don't dehydrate and die. So then the next big project... Oh, good, I can move this. The next big project that I would like to undertake is... Uh, a better supply, a more reliable supply of um, water. So I'm going to create an interesting little sort of aquifer project here at the base of the waterfall. And that's only going to be one of multiple uh, water collection projects. Now there's two ways to keep water. You can either stick water in uh, small and large water tanks. And that's fine. It works pretty well, but it's somewhat expensive. I, I prefer to do like earth moving projects instead, which I find to be really cool um, to build actual dams rather than just build a bunch of water tanks. Planning head, what's that? <laughs> I know, who am I, right? All right, I'm moving around some of my labor. My uh, deep water pump and water tank was full, so I just fired him and put him into the farmhouse to plant some of the additional carrots. And then I'm going to set up another gathering flag. Uh, let's do it here, I guess. And this gathering flag will gather the remaining berries so I can delete the bushes. I don't want to... So we're pretty low on food. I don't want to necessarily... Um, delete these berry bushes without having harvested them, but I will if I, will, I have to. So now we are almost done. We're going to sleep, but we only have five logs left to stick into this dam, and that should retain the water for the first drought. Good stuff. As soon as that's done, this inventor uh, priority is going to become the next big thing. Does the plan involve the river becoming deeper too? Maybe. I'm not sure. Um, sometimes it's it's good to make the river deeper, but the problem is that's a lot of dynamite, and that's very, very expensive. So there's other ways to do it far less at far less of an expense, which is probably the route I'm going to go. I just can't really show you because I don't have the technology to show you at the moment. All right, so Operation Damn It is finished. There it is. And it still, as you can see, allows water to flow through, but it has to flow over the top. Which means that um, when the water stops flowing from the waterfall, not all of the water in this river goes out to the edge of the map. Alright, next project will be the Inventor, and honestly, I wouldn't mind having, I don't know, two of them instead of one, doubling my uh, research rate. So, this one will be maxed, and this one will be uh, high. I got the planks I needed. Oh, yeah, I did. I got nine planks. I got more than I needed because I wasn't paying attention. Thank you for that. And not only that, I'm going to fire my farmer because I don't really need him anymore. Uh, and other things I can do is employ a berry, um, a berry gatherer for these berries over here. And then if you take a look, there are no eligible trees to be cut down for this lumberjack flag. And this lumberjack flag doesn't have any goods in stock, so I'm going to... Actually, I shouldn't have deleted it, but I'm going to turn it off for now. These lumberjacks up here can still uh, cut down the trees on the dried up plateau above. So they can still be employed. Uh, let's see. I have two people unemployed, but I'm building two inventors right now, so they will be soon employed as inventors. 
and I'm just creating a path up to the highest plateau I have access to. Alright, I do have one person unemployed, but uh, I don't need to move them around just yet. I'm about to get this uh, inventor built. In three, two, one, there we go, our first inventor, and we'll start to get, uh, we'll start to get science. And the first science I want to unlock is the Forester at 60. So the sooner I can get the Forester, the better. Uh, the Forester will allow me to replant trees on the map tile. Uh, giving me the ability to have a, a non-finite amount of wood. Alright, this berry person is fired. Go do something else. And actually, I'm going to employ them as the lumber mill. If I can get a few more planks before the water gets cut in half a day, sure, uh, I'll take a few more. There's other things that I can do with planks. Um, and let's go ahead and... Eat a third inventor. I know, seems crazy, but three inventors, better than one. The faster we get them, um, the, the more tech we can unlock. Because if you take a look here, some of the tech is really expensive, like 12,000. I mean, that's one of the most expensive things in the game, or the most expensive thing in the game to unlock. But your inventor gets uh, three science <laughs> at a time, so as you can imagine, 12,000 is kind of a big ask. It's a big lift, and uh, that is exactly why getting a whole bunch of inventors is uh, a pretty functional way of um, jump-starting your economy. All right. Let's close down this lumber mill for now, because we will not be getting any more lumber out of it. As the water is about to stop flowing. Uh, we managed to supply all the logs to this inventor, but not actually build it, which is unfortunate. But they'll be employed doing that tomorrow, that's for sure. And then this area here, I'm slowly, every time we harvest these berries, berries take a long time to grow. They're not a very efficient food source. So every time we uh, harvest the berries, I just remove the bush so I can turn that over to farmland. So here we go. The drought has officially started. So I'm going to update my goals here, or my goal uh, for gain science. Yep, there it is. Uh, so if you take a look, this riverbed is going to dry out completely. And the top here is going to dry out as a result of the water not flowing. But because of the dams I built, I get to retain some of the water. And if, if we sort of clip into it, as you can see, it's about 60, 50 percent, something like that. And the drought is going to last for five days. Pretty long drought. Um, so you can imagine, you know, this is exactly why it is desperate to get those dams up at the start. All right, so there is inventor number two, and I have one more unemployed person who will become inventor number three once this is built. And then we'll start to work on the homelessness problem because we have a, a whole bunch of homelessness. And as soon as I get the Science, uh, we can also start planting trees, which will be really good. And then we get into a lot of the fun stuff. I ran out of children? That I have. That actually brings me to what I want to do next, which is... Add some breeding pods. So that will be my next task that I have for my builders once this inventor is built. So that we can replenish 
two breeding pods is a pretty reasonable amount. Three breeding pods is sort of aggressive repopulation. But yeah, that sounds good to me. I like aggressive repopulation. Okay, I am going to fire that one and actually delete that flag entirely. And now we have three inventors. Cool. And now my builders and lumberjanks are supplying for the breeding pods. It's 10 logs each. And then the breeding pods themselves require uh, berries and water to be able to spawn new beavers. And yeah, the implication is uh, you input berries and water and you out you get out beavers. It's a pretty weird equation if you ask me, but I, I kind of like it. I think at this point what I'm going to start to do is to switch these over to potatoes. And start to do some potato harvesting. And then I'm going to want to get uh, storages for logs and general goods, and also housing. So here is going to be... Oh, that's a warehouse. Uh, here is going to be my first house, my first barracks. I'm going to set it up there, but this is going to be my lowest priority. Yeah, apparently beavers are made out of, like, wine. Berry wine. Or berry mead, or something like that. I... I that's apt. Does it allow you to walk on top of the barracks? Yes. So that is a concept of this game, that uh, buildings are stackable. Obviously, the entry points for these buildings need to be accessible, but some buildings are what they call solid. And solid buildings can be built on top of one another. Some buildings require uh, you to build it on the ground. Like a temple is only on the ground. Um, or a rooftop terrace is only above ground. Where I can't put it on the ground, I can only put it on a rooftop. But yes, the game allows you to build vertically. Uh, and that's very cool. I like it a lot. Alright, so now we're starting to get the carrots harvestable. So I've re-employed a farmer. And... The constructors and lumberjacks are supplying for the breeding pods. And the farmer right now is prioritized for harvesting. You can also prioritize specific crops as well, but for now, just harvest is fine. I'm good with just general harvest. Why did it go with the iron teeth? Um... I went with the Garen Teeth because I think the folktales are probably the most played, so I want to show the species that is less common for people to play. They're different. They're vat grown. I like the fact that they're vat grown, if you can't already tell. They're metal. Yeah, they're metal beavers. What's more to say? Alright, I wouldn't mind. Okay, you, you're fired. There's no... Wait, there's even trees for you to cut. Yeah, you lazy. Alright, so he's going to be employed in the farmhouse. And then as soon as I get 60 science, I'll be unlocking that forester that I want. If you take a look here, we started off at about 50%. It actually looks to be still roughly about 50% water in that river. And obviously the deeper or larger that river is, the more water it will hold which is a, another important concept to uh, to keep in mind. Thank you for tuning in to Timberborn, which originally streamed live on Twitch. If you have any feedback for me, let me know in the comments below. If you'd like to catch a live stream, Rodamont.com has my stream schedule and countdown timers to upcoming streams, as well as a link to Discord, where you can chat about Timberborn in real time. Thank you so very much for watching. I hope to catch you next episode or an upcoming stream. Farewell, everybody.